Good morning. Uh, today, uh, NATO's defense ministers uh, will uh, meet uh, to address our support to Ukraine and uh, how to further strengthen our deterrence and defense. And uh, to do both, uh, we need to invest more and uh, we are on the right track uh, because uh, we now have historic numbers when it comes to defense investments. Last year, we saw an 11% uh, real increase in defense spending across uh, Europe and uh, Canada. Um, this year, we expect uh, 18 allies uh, to meet the target of uh, spending 2% uh, of GDP uh, on uh, defense. And uh, uh, European allies uh, together spend uh, uh, 280 billion US dollars uh, on defense. Um, and uh, this is 2% uh, uh, of their combined uh, GDP. But we still have uh, a way to go, uh, because uh, at our summit in uh, Vilnius last year, all allies uh, promised to spend 2% uh, uh, of uh, GDP on defense, and 2% is a minimum. Then, uh, later on today, I will chair a meeting of the NATO-Ukraine Council. Um, we will address how to sustain our support to uh, Ukraine. Um, we see that our support is making a difference uh, uh, on the battlefield every day. Uh, just uh, yesterday, uh, the Ukrainians were able to strike successfully um, uh, a Russian naval ship. And this uh, demonstrates the skills and the competence of the Ukrainian armed forces, also in conducting deep strikes behind the Russian uh, lines. Um, to ensure that Ukraine gets the weapons, the, uh, uh, the supplies, the ammunitions they need, we need to ramp up production. And uh, NATO allies have, uh, just over the last months, uh, since we agreed the defense investment plan, um, agreed uh, and signed contracts for uh, 10 billion uh, uh, euros uh, uh, for more uh, orders from uh, um, different parts of the transatlantic defense uh, industry. Um, I welcome that NATO allies are providing more support, more air defense, more ammunition. I welcome the decision by the European Union to allocate 50 billion uh, euros to uh, Ukraine. And I expect the US Congress to agree a, a package of uh, uh, continued uh, support to Ukraine because supporting Ukraine is not charity. Supporting Ukraine is an investment in our own uh, security. And with that, I'm ready to take a few questions. ARD, please. The recent uh, warnings from the US government that Ukraine is running out of ammunition. Isn't it too little too late what the West is doing to support the country? We see the impact already of uh, the uh, fact that the US has not been able to make a, a decision. But I expect the US uh, uh, to be able to make a decision that the Congress and the House of Representatives will agree uh, uh, continued support to Ukraine uh, because uh, if we allow uh, President Putin to win, it will not only be uh, bad for the Ukrainians, a tragedy for the Ukrainians, but it will also be dangerous for us. It, it, it will make the world uh, even more uh, dangerous and us more vulnerable. So therefore, it is in our security interest uh, to, uh, to do so. I, I, I visited the United States a couple of weeks ago. I spent a lot of time uh, 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 with representatives from both sides of uh, the aisle in the U.S. Congress. And the broad message there, uh, there is broad agreement there uh, for sustained support. And I, I, I count on the U.S. Congress to be able to reflect that, uh, that support uh, in a decision to sustain the support for, uh, for Ukraine. Bloomberg, in front of me here, please. What's your response to Trump considering proposing a two-tiered NATO alliance whereby Article 5 would only apply to nations that hit their defence spending targets? Article 5, uh, the commitment to defend uh, all allies uh, and that an attack on one ally will be regarded as an attack on all is the core uh, of NATO, is the heart of NATO. And of course that applies for all allies. Um, uh, because we know that uh, any uh, 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 suggestion that uh, we are not there to protect and defend uh, all allies, will undermine the security of all of us and uh, put at risk our soldiers, our, our personnel who are on the front lines uh, to protect uh, uh, the whole alliance. So 
uh, one for all, all for one, applies for all allies, and uh, it's the heart of uh, NATO. Mr. Secretary-General, European leaders seem worried after Donald Trump's uh, statements and there is talk of uh, uh, st strategic autonomy again, maybe even uh, a, a completely different nuclear capacity. Are you worried that Mr. Trump's statements will signal the beginning of the end of NATO and the beginning of something else in Europe? So I welcome uh, that European allies are investing more in defence, and NATO has called for that for many, many years. And NATO has also called for European allies to invest more in high-end capabilities, more forces, higher readiness, and now European allies are delivering that. That's a good thing. But that's not an alternative to NATO. That is actually a way to strengthen NATO. Uh, and we should not uh, uh, pursue any path that indicates that we are uh, trying to divide Europe uh, from North America. Uh, the strength is that we have uh, Europe and North America together in, uh, in NATO. We have to remember that um, uh, uh, non-EU uh, NATO allies uh, account for 80% of NATO's defence spending. Um, and this is not only about resources, but also about geography. If you look to the south, we have Turkey, a non-EU ally, but important for the southern flank. In the north, you have countries like Norway and Iceland, um, perhaps not the biggest uh, military powers, but still extremely critical for the transatlantic link, for the protection of the link between North America and, uh, and Europe. And then in the west, you have uh, uh, the United States, Canada, but also the United Kingdom. So uh, the, the strength of NATO is that we bring uh, Europe and North America together. Together we have 50% of the world's uh, economic might, 50% of the world's military might. So as long as we stand together, we are able to send a message to any ad adversary that we are able to protect uh, all allies. On nuclear, let me just say that um, NATO has a nuclear deterrent, uh, and this has worked for decades. Uh, and this is the ultimate uh, deterrence uh, we have. Um, and uh, we should, of course, uh, always continue to ensure that this nuclear uh, deterrent of NATO remains safe, secure and effective. Um, uh, and we have uh, agreed procedures for command and control, uh, doctrines, and this is actually a joint effort by the United States and European uh, allies, the NATO nuclear deterrent. We should not do anything to undermine that. That will only create more uncertainty and more uh, room for miscalculation and misunderstanding. So we should uh, be committed to the NATO nuclear deterrent and not do anything to undermine that. Last question, Zerkalo, in front of me here, please. Zerkalo, uh, Belarus. Uh, in 2020, during the post-election protests in Belarus, uh, Putin supported Lukashenko, including a military reform at reserve of Rosguardia near the border of our country. Uh, because of this, democracy in Belarus uh, lost. Uh, if uh, uh, democracy had won, Russia would not have been able to attack Ukraine from Belarus, uh, to deploy nuclear weapons and treat NATO countries uh, neighboring Belarus. Maybe it's time to change NATO strategy and start supporting peoples in the, of uh, Europe fighting for democracy. And what do you think about the role of, of Lukashenko in this aggression? Uh, President Lukashenko and Belarus has been a staging ground for uh, uh, the Russian aggression against uh, Ukraine uh, since the very beginning, uh, when uh, Russia uh, amassed uh, troops along the Ukrainian border uh, before the uh, invasion. Many of them were uh, deployed uh, in Belarus, and uh, large part of, of the invasion actually was launched from Belarus. So uh, Belarus has been complicit. Uh, to the Russian aggression against Ukraine uh, yeah, since the beginning. Um, we strongly believe that uh, uh, all nations have the right to live in freedom, in democracy, and uh, NATO is built on the core values of freedom and democracy, and that also, of course, applies for the people of Belarus. Thank you. Thank you.